Okay, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, first of all, I would like to thank the organization for the opportunity to present my work today. I decided to um, present the progress of our research work concerning the functional analysis of postbiotics and that analyze symbiotic relationships between the gut microbiome and the host genome. So, um, as you know, the gut microbiota is a complex sy system of mutualistic microorganisms hosting 100 trillion bacteria representing 1 to 3 percent of body mass, encoding for maybe 4 million of genes. And it sits at the interface between the environment and the host organism. And it contributes to um, nutritional processes through many bacterial specific metabolic reactions. <coughs> so our objectives were to identify biological relationships between the gut microbiome and the host genome through the identity metabolomic uh, profiling and physiological phenotyping. So I, I, have a I'm not sure it's important one. You say there are 100 trillion bacteria. Yeah. And I read several places there are 10 times more bacteria than cells in the body. According to this, yes. it's, it's less. Okay, I agree. That's so where, where is this number coming from? The 100 trillion? Mm. Um, Wikipedia. <laughs> no, not in Wikip Wikipedia, maybe. Oh, it's the same thing, uh, you know, uh, PubMed. Uh, no, uh, I found it in, uh, in one paper. Um, so, yeah, I will... No, how it was counted? Very fine. A different way to count. How it was counted? Well, the protocol, the several counting protocol, it's not obvious. How you count either of them? I don't know. Say, so for you, it was only recently the number was correctly estimated. That's right? Very good. Well, uh, I don't think this is the major point of this talk. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> continue. Thank you. I will try and... You have a good, good point of view about the um, how, but I don't know. So, uh, first, <laughs> I try to continue, and uh, we um, established correlation uh, analysis in human. We used untargeted uh, gas chr chromatography. Sorry, up this machine, and we uh, obtained uh, peaks. Uh, corresponding to metabolite signals. Uh, we acquired uh, around uh, 15,000 metabolites and we obtained this kind of figure uh, which gave us a cluster of co-regulated metabolites. This metabolite from the gut bacteria? Now. Yeah. No, microbiome metabolites from the, from the serum of patients. Uh, yes. I said with patients. Ah, ah yes. that's different. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
We can also find uh, chrysanthemum at, lo at low levels in food, such as vegetables, tomatoes, asparagus, cheeses, butter, bacon, and also in some drinks, such as coffee, black tea, wine, uh, brandy and rum. So we are physiologists, that's why we developed a pipeline to investigate the different uh, role of uh, microbial metabolites in vivo in mouse. For this reason, we used C67 black 6 mice on show diet or on high fat diet to study the obesity and insulin resistance. In fact, we used these uh, osmotic pumps from Halzet. We filled uh, this reservoir with a metabolite solution and we put the um, osmotic pumps here in mice. Um, you connected it with, the, with, the, with, the, with blood, or what? what exactly you done? Under so the skin. Under the skin, under the skin, under the skin. It's a, a little incision here in the dorsal lateral, and we put the, um, the pumps under the skin. Mm -hmm. and the experimental design was four groups of six male mice, uh, control groups with pump containing saline on show diet or on high fat diets, and uh, experimental group with the metabolites of interest, today the cresol on show diet or on high fat diet. Here you can see the experiment timeline. But what level of concentration comparable to what? Uh, it's a very good question. Um, we used um, 0.5 milligrams per kilo uh, of mice per day. It's, uh, I think the concentration is a thousand times smaller uh, than toxic uh, concentration. We um, performed a, a toxicity uh, analysis. Uh, With normal concentration in blood, how it compares to what you observe in blood? In blood, it's very, 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 very uh, complicated because I saw in the literature maybe point point 0.8 uh, micromolar to uh, 150 millimolar. So it's, it's a big range, it's a big range. I, I don't have the, the, the answer. Unfortunately, but we're going to check in our uh, in a larger data bank. So we uh, tested several molecules, and today we're going to focus on the chronic infusion of focrisol. So first, we wanted to so check how big <coughs> groups of mice. How much mice in the group? Uh, six. 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 Oh, six. Oh, six. Small groups. Okay. Yes. Yeah, well. So uh, we wanted to check the effect of this metabolite, the focrisol, on uh, glucose homeostasis. We performed an IPGTT. IPGTT is for intra intraperitoneal glucose tolerance test. In fact, we injected a glucose solution, two grams per kilo, uh, to animals and to control their response to this glycemic stress over time. In fact, we measured the glycemia during the time. First, we wanted to um, measure the impact of the diets. Here with the black curves, a dotted line corresponding to um, control on uh, show diet and the solid line for control on high fat diets. And as expected, we demonstrated that the high fat diet deteriorates glucose tolerance. Now um, we had red curves corresponding to uh, groups uh, under four crystal treatment. And we demonstrated that the four crystal improves the glucose tolerance, as confirmed by the calculation of uh, area under curve. And here is the color code for the rest of my presentation: saline, so control group in white, and um, in black for four crystal treated animals. So we demonstrated that the four crystal improves glucose tolerance. In parallel, we uh, collected blood samples and we measured insulin secretion uh, using ELISA assay. And we uh, demonstrated that here with the black bars that the four results successfully stimulate the glucose-induced insulin secretion. The most striking observation in our, our experiment was concerning the pancreas weight. We did ratio pancreas weight on body weight and we observed... Me, this corresponds to more to, to, to diabetes 1. The phenomenon you observe with rather correlates with the one. I, I think it's a bit too type. Pre diabetic state, they have high level of insulin and they control the lab, yes. blood and glucose. And and later on, more. the pancreas is uh, uh, overexhausted, insulin level goes down and glucose level go up. But this is what is occurring in patients before they show up high blood, uh, high glucose level in the blood. Normally, with high fat diet, we induced uh, type 2 diabetes. 
So uh, chronic administration of FOC results strongly increases the pancreas weight when compared to mice, uh, to control mice. That's why we analyzed the uh, histology of pancreas to test whether the islet structure was affected by FOC result. We um, performed uh, hematoxylin eosine uh, staining, which uh, stain in pink here islets of Langerhans, which produce uh, insulin. You can find here too. Mm -hmm. And we confirm this with immunochemistry against uh, insulin, with an antibody against insulin here in brown. And with statistical analysis, we uh, observe that the four result administration is associated with a strong increase in both islet density and um, insulin positive area. To investigate the possible cause of uh, this increase of beta cell area and insulate, insulate uh, islet density, we uh, perform the co-localization experiment against insulin, like in the previous experiment, and uh, against K67, because K67 is the biomarker of cell proliferation. So we reproduce the same thing here with the statistical analysis that the fork result increases the size of uh, islets. And here with the K67 approach, we demonstrated that the fork result in increases the number of proliferative nuclei in islets. So we have proliferation with a fork result. The next and last step was to understand or to document the mechanism that uh, folk result, uh, through folk result um, can impact the um, cell proliferation. So um, one kinase, the Dirkwane, sorry for the name because it's very long, uh, it has been demonstrated that ki this kinase um, can be uh, inhibited by the armin, this, in fact, and this inhibition increases the human pancreatic beta cell proliferation. In another paper here, uh, we can also find that the inhibition of Dirk1A stimulates the beta cell proliferation. So our hypothesis was that the folk result can mimic the effect of armin on metabolism and beta cell proliferation through the inhibition uh, of Dirk1A. Uh, preliminary results in biochemical assay uh, show that the folk result and diacrone can interact with uh, uh, can interact, and here with the half maximum inhibitory curve, we demonstrated that the folk result is a diacrone inhibitor. Finally, we performed a QPC analysis in our um, animals, and we demonstrated that the folk result don't regulate the amyrin expression of diacrone. So in conclusion, the animals chronically treated with folk result exhibit a significant downregulation of pancreatic diaquinate transcription. To conclude, uh, we wanted to illustrate the effects of this gut microbial activity on human health. In fact, uh, tyrosine is metabolized by microbiota in folk result. Folk result can interact with diaquinate, and the result of this uh, interaction has an impact on pancreas. Um, the folk result uh, increases the beta cell proliferation, insulin secretion, and don't regulate the mRNA level of diaquinate. Our data illustrate the health benefits of postbiotics, which involve communication between bacterial metabolites and the host through the regulation of cellular proteins. Wait, wait. So, uh, folk result is affecting the transcription of yes, uh, yes, yes. Uh, the level of the protein. The we don't know yet. We have to. You, you are showing <coughs> your mRNA expression. Right? The mRNA expression, but we hope that it's correlated with the protein, but we don't know. No, no, no. I'm saying that the mechanism is through mRNA expression, not the protein. Okay. 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 Transcription is versus transcription. Right. right. Okay. <coughs> yeah? Okay, I would like to thank just my lab, uh, my supervisor, Dominique Gauguet, present here and all my collaborators from Kyoto University and uh, McGill. Thank you. Questions? Yeah. 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 Which, which bacteria may yeah. make this? Exactly. Ah. Many bacteria, uh, uh, principally Clostridium difficile. E. coli can make it? Um, if? 
E. coli. E. coli? Uh, no, no, no. I think it's a, a special okay. name with a lactobacillus, blah, blah, blah. I don't know the, yeah. the real yeah. time. I think this is quite amazing because you can use it to cure type 2 diabetes. Mm, I hope. For Cresol. Uh, we apply Instead of giving them insulin. Yeah, I think the, the, the idea is that it's something we discussed this morning. It's the, how we can we can uh, change the bacteria bacterial ecosystem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And drive the bacterial right, right. ecosystem but to produce the something. The is all by itself can replace insulin. It, it, this is the it, major uh, thing because it's very difficult to transplant uh, a, a pancreatic uh, beta cell in patients with type two diabetes. Mm -hmm. But this is this can do that because it increases the proliferation of the cells. Yes, exactly. If I can answer, uh, we performed the experiment on a type two diabetes model yeah. in rats, GK rat, yeah. and we restore the beta cell proliferation. Mm -hmm. So it, wow. it's yeah. Well, yeah, it's wow, but uh, well, uh, we have to be. Uh, so glucose tolerant test. Yes, yes, and, and we. Fine. Yes, and oh. we uh, demonstrated that the structure of islets, because normally the pancreas of GK rats are totally disrupted. And, uh, yes, yes, <laughs> yes, 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 we are, we are uh, trying to, to patent now. Okay, yeah. What's the solubility of Forcresol and how do you think it gets from the intestine <coughs> into the pancreas? The availability? Solubility. Um, soluble compound. So I'm curious right. whether there has to be a carrier or something that gets it. To uh, I think that chrysol can interact with albumin. Okay. This is the only thing I, uh, I know. Oh, with no more questions, there are no more questions. Uh, we'll go to the second talk.